this very moment for the first time in nearly 250 years, we are now crossing that bridge into the most higher consciousness in humanity. Today's show is going to be, I can already feel it, an utter delight. <laughs> We are going to be talking about a sacred science, a deep, deep wisdom tradition rooted in the stars that has been such a gorgeous guide and companion on my path with one of the most phenomenal astrologers uh, living on this earth. Today, I have a very special guest, my friend, Daryl Gaines, who is an internationally celebrated astrologer who has been working with the magic of the stars for decades, guiding and informing people about their destiny for decades. And he's an absolutely mind-blowing storyteller. So I can't wait to bring all of this to life and a little background on Daryl. For over 20 years, Daryl has been sharing astrological perspectives and wisdom to help his clients better relate to the experience of their lives. Daryl's deep insights offer awareness and clarity to help you navigate through life's ups and downs, covering issues related to health and wellness, relationships, family, career, finances, ancestors, and traditions, and your life's purpose, and so much more. Welcome to the show. Oh, Carol it's so Gaines. good to be here. Ah. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you for having me. What an introduction. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. You are fascinating to me, Daryl Gaines, in so <laughs> many ways. One, because I am gratefully a client of yours and enjoy the power of the way you bring this work into the world and just kind of taking you all in and really being an observation of like, let's look at the fibers of how you become you. I would love if we could sure. kind of, before we, we have so much to talk about. So before sure. we get into some of the bigger things happening in the stars, you know, I think of someone like you who has this just profound gift, um, and then I think of, you know, what it takes to bring a gift like that actually to life, right? Like when yes. people are living their purpose, when they're living in their gifts, when they have the courage, especially to do non-traditional, quote unquote, non-traditional things in times where they aren't popular. <sighs> I admire that in people. Thank and you. so knowing, you know, some of what I know in your life, it's yes. you're a black man raised in Pittsburgh, yes. coming of age around the 70s and yes. 80s, yes, and coming into this really massive gift that you have, doing something that, if we're clear, is not really understood, especially in those times, by the Black community, by many, by really any communities Absolutely. at that time. Absolutely. How did you... How did you first connect to astrology and know that that was one of the vessels of your purpose and your gifts? It was very challenging because of growing up in that collective consciousness at that time. Yes. And as we well know, it's gotten so much better. I love that the kids today, they're on it. Yeah. They are so on it. But that said, it was very, very challenging. Uh because it wasn't accepted. I mm -hmm. came from a very religious household. Mm -hmm. They thought that this belief system was that of a darkness. Yes. Um, and although I didn't agree with my family's belief system, I had that mindset of being a naysayer. Oh, that astrology, it's nonsense. This is me at 14. But the moment, that I start living my innate essence of curiosity and wanting to understand, mm. to be curious, but also to care and to be aware. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to figure out why am I so different? Why do I have, what is it? Why do I have to be this 
18 year old kid who goes to the Soviet Union mm. before, you know, when it was very closed. Mm -hmm. And then traveling through Europe, finding an astrologer who says, oh, you're going to bring this back to a spiritual science. Wow. A spirit. And I, and I said, no, because I was afraid of ego. Why would you put that on me? She says, no. And then as she delineated my chart, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, you know, you can't. I, I, there was no way that I could fight the truth. Mm. There was such healing in my first session as an adolescent because, again, being in an environment that was diametrically opposed to who I am. A piece of who I am. Yeah. A piece. Yeah. Um, so, and from then I start studying. I came back to New York. I start taking classes. Uh, I had many mentors, but every mentor, every instructor would say, yes, study the foundation. Mm. But your gift is that energy that I spoke previously mm. that's in your chart that energy of bringing awareness mm. and taking some of those challenges of being different and being okay. Mm. Because the beauty of when I look at a chart um, is you see a person as they are. Mm. And even with the challenges of people who with my lack of maturity of thinking they were against me. But once you look at the chart, there's forgiveness. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, I wanna sit in this part. I wanna sit in this part because, you know, the, the way we've kind of been expressing astrology in a way that I think um, for the people that are connected to their charts, a lot of the ways we first begin to use it is to really get clear feedback on who we are, the things that we are sensing inside, mm -hmm. and then getting the validation of, yeah, actually that is your intended path, or yes, that is your gift, or, you know, um, it's a way to really connect to mission, to purpose, to an ability to move forward. But the piece that has been monumental to my life is what you're speaking to right now, which is, using astrology as a shadow guide as well, yes. using astrology as a tool of healing some of the traumas. Yes. Can, can you speak to absolutely how that dynamic happens? Like what is the healing that comes through when you kind of sit with and investigate those patterns and themes that show up in your birth chart? Well, and I want to preface it that we're not making an excuse for perhaps bad behavior. Yes, yeah. We're bringing understanding. Mm. It's that element of forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Mm. But we also want to make them aware. And if they so choose, they so choose. But we also have to forgive because it allows some of that trauma to be healed. It's a process. Spiritually, yeah. It's a process yeah. through the cycles. Yeah. We all, as we go around through the cycles, and ultimately, Devi, we walk in each other's shoes. God, yes. Every two and a half mm. years, we go through a subconscious. That's what the moon is. The moon represents our subconscious, tapping in to what lies beneath. Mm -hmm. That's why when I do a chart, I always immediately look at the moon and I look at its relationships with the energy of Pluto transformation. Mm -hmm. That's psychotherapy 101. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's why I, I you know, a lot, I have a few um, therapists who send their clients just yes. to get an understanding and then they can work once they know those key points. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, uh, we have an opportunity to walk in each other's shoes because we go through a lunar cycle every two and a half years. And with awareness, there's forgiveness. I think it also, it gives you a view that makes sometimes 
depending on the circumstance, this is very individual for each of us, but it gives you the ability to not take some of the challenges in your life so personally, to not feel like maybe there was an agenda against you or how do these things happen to you? Sometimes, you know, I know for me, there were certain moments in my life that seemed just so incredibly, irrationally, absurdly, profoundly mm -hmm. hard, challenging, yes. painful. Yes. And when I kind of dive into my chart and I'm looking at it from more, more of an observational lens, less judgment, it's kind of like, oh, that was always meant to happen. <laughs> you know, not, not, in a, not in a way that I'm trying to minimize some of the deeper things that we go through, mm -hmm. but at a certain point you can zoom out and say, I see the story being told. I understand that there was something that had to be a catalyst for this to be unlocked. Yes. Unfortunately, in the time, it had to come in that way. However, that was just the theme that, in my belief, I signed up for before I came, right? You know, for those that believe um, in reincarnation and believe in this kind of divine dance we're doing with God of coming and learning and then serving, it's mm -hmm. it allows you to see some of the pain points in your chart with a lot more loving kindness, a yes. lot more neutrality. Yes, absolutely. And with your chart, again, because it's vibrating, very visibly, and even though sometimes emotionally, I mean, you're you're showing up so vividly present, but so much, and many times through the different cycles, you want to be vividly not uh, vividly not present at all, <laughs> right? But yeah, that's my me. I'm like the deepest part of me always wants to be a hermit. Like I just want to be at home, surrounded by beauty, creating things, but just kind of being to myself. <laughs> but you were given the responsibility of being vividly present with boundaries. Mm. And I'm, I won't go into the, 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 the astrological diagnosis of that, but the energies in your chart and how those energies form relationships is a person who has a lot of responsibility to heal but also to set boundaries, to protect that need, because your energy comes, that power comes from silence, because true power is quiet, mm -hmm. ultimately, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to take a trip to New York. Okay. So you have such a fascinating life, Daryl Gaines. Like, I hope the autobiography is coming at some point because um, oh. the stories, the experiences, yeah. one of the many um, really fascinating experiences in your life is you helped to develop Soul Cycle. Yes, I was, I was the first male instructor because I was discovered here in Los Angeles mm. and they brought me sight unseen to New York, back to New York, I didn't want to go back because I left New York to come out to LA for this idea of combining astrology with health and wellness, mm. astro fitness. Mm. And mm. it was wonderful. And it was accepted as far as uh, me knocking on doors. I have this idea. But where was I at that time? I wasn't believing enough to follow through mm. so, or perhaps for whatever reason I didn't. But the point about soul cycle, it was a piece of understanding energy and how to use it and to take, because when I look at the chart, what I see is a beautiful composition, a be beautiful piece of music. Mm. The universe is perfect. Sometimes we like to f fall back on what is negative. Mercury's retrograde. Saturn is at odds with my moon for six months. <laughs> okay, chicken little, the sky's falling. The truth of the matter is, it's so perfectly orchestrated mm. to make us aware. Mm. We're the ones who are singing or we're dancing, not to the beat, 
astrology with this awareness gets us perfect pitch, mm. perfect pitch. And that's not sugarcoating a challenging cycle, yeah. but just fundamental parts of maturity. You have to pause. You have, you have to go back to move forward sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's so beautifully orchestrated. And getting back to that piece about soul cycle and physical fitness, it was my idea to take all of that steady back in New York of astrology and my love mm. for wellness and to merge it. Wow. And the way I curated my classes, it was in the moment. It was that Aquarian, all we have is the present. Mm. The ability to feel that, what does Mercury feel like in this moment? What does Mars retrograde Ooh. feel like right now? Why am I playing Can't See Me by Tupac? Oh, <laughs> Mars and Pluto. It's a very Mars energy. Mm. And that, that energy, wow. it's energy. It's like Roberto Clemente. He said, I, I never play happy. I, I, I play baseball angry. But he was the most happiest giving man. He, he gave his life service. And here he under, again, energy. It's okay to be angry, yeah. but to use it. And that's what astrology does. And that's what I am still working on, bringing that together of energy from above, as above, so below, how, how to curate it. I curated it with the class without so much speaking about it. It was through the music. And that's what I'm doing now with my, uh, with my postings, using music to tell a story. Because music ultimately is very transcending. Mm. Mm. Because it transcends us from the ordinary to the extraordinary mm. by mm. staying on the beat of the music. Our life is so musical mm. with understanding musical. of the energy. Yeah. And it's okay sometimes. Like right now, so what? It was a difficult seven months. So what? I was paralyzed physically. Mm. The ego, oh, I'm not looking the way I want to look. So what? But what about now? Mm. Where are you now? Are you going to stay paralyzed in the past? And what have you learned during that time? You, you were out there helping others. Yeah. What I'm hearing. In spite of. What I'm hearing and what you're saying is like, you know, it helps it helps us, this awareness helps us accept our cycles, right? Because if we are just being with ourselves through the lens of society, then, then all of a sudden it matters that we don't look the way we quote unquote want to look for a handful of months. Right. But that's not how nature flows. You know, I, I'm a believer that, you know, I, I, I can fluctuate all the time depending on the seasons and not mm. necessarily cause like my diet is changing, but I recognize that as also like, oh, spirit wants me a little more grounded right now. So it's giving me a little extra, you know, gravity to my body to kind of absolutely take root. And absolutely. then sometimes you need to be a little more airy and you need to move faster in certain ways or you need to kind of bring forward um, parts of yourself or your body that are necessary for the moment. Um, but it's respecting and having respecting. reverence and acceptance that's for right. the cycles as they come. That's all a part of that of that wellness, that six piece to the collective chart and tapping into that, understanding that sixth hour, what time is it? Mm. And being okay. It's not a license to, you know, stop, but there's a reason for the pause. There's yeah. a reason for the or orchestration of your life to be in the valley so <laughs> you'll know the glory of the top of the mountain. Ooh and when you fight these moments, yes. you yes. do yourself a disservice because you're not dancing with your life. You're not dancing with the intended path. When you fight it, you prolong what's yes. intended. You're not using the yes. energetic potential that's available to you in that moment. That's right. Ooh, wee. And Come that's on, Daryl Gaines. <laughs> that's why it's so exciting now, Ooh. Debbie. Because regardless of our charts, we're at such a collective starting point. Yeah. That energy that takes us from the home 
and to the outer world to be successful. It's known as the planet Saturn. Saturn, of course, sometimes is viewed as, oh no, Saturn's coming. Bring it on. Mm. We want the Jupiter, but the Jupiter, you know, too much of a good thing is a, too much of a good thing. And these starting points with those energies of transformation mm. and being successful at home to the outer world. But as, you know, when I look at chart, as I said, it's always the moon and the bottom. Mm. The bottom is the nadir, home, mother, the foundation of life. And until you know home, and it's not, it's not a physical location. It's knowing what lies beneath, inside, the moon. Mm. Again, the nadir. Once you are at home, you know yourself. Forgive me for quoting the whiz. You know your courage. You know your heart. And you can go anywhere hmm. because you're always home. Hmm. And I, forgive me for going in a different direction, but I really recommend anyone who has a novice interest in astrology or even advanced, look at home because everything starts at home, that bottom of the chart. It's so important yeah. because it's a part of our healing. Mm. It's so important. It's so powerful. It's the foundation. We all, of course, want to be at the top, and that makes total sense. But it, the work starts at the bottom. Mm. <laughs> right? And, I love that. And, you know, it's, it's difficult. But it's so rewarding. Yeah. 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 It's the it's why we're here. It's the mm -hmm. point. It's the whole point of it all. Mm -hmm. Can we play a little game? Yes. I want to play a game <clears throat> and bring forward a couple names of people I consider, I think many of us consider to be great awakeners. Yes. Right? They're they're people that in their own ways in their time, really created paradigm shifts um, or helped to enforce and, and bring forward the shifts that were meant to begin happening on the planet. Yes. Can I, add, can I throw out a couple names sure. and tell me a little Absolutely. bit about Absolutely. what their life was intended to represent? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to start with my favorite person, my internal soulmate, I believe. Can you tell me about Tupac Shakur? Wow. Not only do I love his energy, mm. um, and of, of course, we, we all immediately say, oh, he's a Gemini. But, you know, sun sign. We were born to yes. be apart, so I just Absolutely. want to start there. Absolutely. <laughs> With the sun in Gemini, and guess what? What rules Gemini? Mercury. Where is his Mercury? And Gemini sitting right next to his son. Mm. What relationship does that form? It forms with a very strong Mars, but that Mars is in Aquarius. Mm. So his words, not only were they powerful, not only were they alpha in a very good way, a very inspiring way, mm. but the world heard those words hmm. profoundly. Mm -hmm. You know, that sun in Gemini, the ruler, the ruler of Gemini's Mercury, in harmony with the higher form of the mind. Because if Gemini is the lower form, and that's not a negative thing, by the way, yeah. because you have, like he, this connection between the lower form, beautifully and harmoniously in touch with the higher form, higher consciousness. Mm. I found that like, like Pac is so polarizing, right? Like you're either under the, the frame of thought that he's the greatest of all time, which I think, or you want to debate it and put him up next to like other, you know, icons of the time, but who had different messages. And outside of just the hip hop sense, like lyrically and, and all of that, Pac was such an awakener, and I feel like he speaks to a certain kind of person that had these, like, this revolutionary inner life, 
you know, yes. this, that maybe their circumstance did not allow for them to be, you know, the, the young kid at Juilliard or, you know, the, the person did not allow for the community and the environment that could really nurture yes. certain aspects of those gifts, but you felt them churning yes. and there was a desire to express, there was a desire to learn a higher thought and I think that that is very linked with a lot of the people that are obsessed in the way that I'm obsessed with Fock. Because it's a part of who you are. Yeah, yeah. It's so deeply a part of your innate essence. Mm. Deeply. That speaking to the disenfranchised. It gets back to what I said previously. Making others feel like a star. Mm. Here you are. The ruler of your chart is the sun because it begins as a Leo rising. But it's not, look at me, look at, look at me because I want you to shine. I want you to take mm -hmm. this light. And Tupac had the same thing, in it, especially in a very, and it has nothing to do with gender, but that alpha way, that's why it was so polarizing. Mm. Because that energy is the truth. Yeah. And the truth, as we know, can be very inconvenient. As liberate, okay. as liberating as it is, <laughs> it can I be. That's that. the fact that we're debating. The fact that we're debating at this very moment that woke is a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay because yeah. you know it's okay. We're, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I say it with arrogance. We're we're fair and square here now. This age of awareness and, mm -hmm. and more fairness. Over the next three years, our eyes should be burning, Debbie. Oh, say more to that, please. Our eyes should be burning because we're at that this critical juncture. Um, the what reason, is this juncture in time represent? This, pol this polarization, you know, rather, whether it's the vaccine or whatever, uh, yeah. uh, gender identification, all of it. It began a few years ago. When you look at that energy, we faced off when it first started to appear. What was going on? Civil rights, human rights, women's rights, yeah. the decolonization of Africa, mm. gay rights, human rights. And now that was the overture. And now there's no turning back. Yeah. And of course, yeah. The dinosaurs, the dinosaurs are off to Jurassic Park. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not even, it's not political. It just is. When you look at the, when you look at the placement in the sky, what do you see? You know, we are firmly rooted in this, this age of churning too. Yes. You know, like this is a time of real churning. Absolutely. When do we come into the butter? <laughs> well, I shy away from putting on my predictive hat, um, but I'm not going to play passive aggressive today. <laughs> uh, 2025. Yeah, we start the next the next really two and a half years are so exciting. Wow, are so incredibly exciting, perhaps troubling, uh, because you know there'll there's a need for sacrifice in this life, mm -hmm. and it's not a cliche. We have to have dark to have light. Yeah. You know, you look back at every cycle, look back at the 60s, look at, at any time there was a need to move forward th through death, because there is no death, there's only rebirth. Mm. Mm. And that's where we're going now. Mm. Mm. Because the awareness, we want to fight it. We want to fight it simply, as I said by thinking that woke is a bad word. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the misappropriation of other people. But the energy, especially <clears throat> since that last configuration uh, of these two powerful planets, structure and order and transformation. The last time we had it was September 11th in a cycle. Wow. The next time, the COVID crises. Mm. And now as we move to a place that hasn't been for 250 years, so many ways, metaphorically, we put mask on. 
I mean, literally, we put masks on. Yeah. Metaphorically, we're taking them off. Mm. We've never seen people so clearly. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> right? My goodness. Yeah. Rather in our personal lives. Yeah. Rather in our personal lives are in the outside world. Absolutely. We're seeing people so clearly. And you as a healer, as an awakener, you're seeing the truth clearer than ever. Yeah. As for me, with my clients, I I feel I've never been so insightful or mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's not false optimism because I, you know, I, I'm a realist. But when you look at the chart, 80% of it is about structure and order. It is about maturity, yeah. progression. Yeah. But then... You know, one and one equals two. But when you've done all you can, then there is help me, universe, help me, God, the miracle. Two and two become nine mm. because we let go. Mm. <clears throat> I want to ask you about someone else, too. Yes. There, um, this person is representative of so much. She is a powerful woman. She's mm -hmm. a beautiful woman. She is a creative woman. And she is the first of her kind. She's truly one on one, one of one. Can you tell me about what is written in the stars for Michelle Obama? To be the power behind the throne. Mm. It gets back to something that resonates deeply, something I feel. True power is quiet. And she was a part of, you know, it was very ancestral mm. of moving ahead. And that's, that's why perhaps she has no interest in being a president because her power is, 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 is served better. And it's, and it's not a matter of that it's, that it's better than that, but it's better than that. Mm. Mm, because mm. inspiration. Mm. True. Like one of the most inspiring figures of our She time. has all of that. Yeah. She, yeah. She has a lot of what I see in your chart. Oh, Lord. It's a lot of no responsibility, pressure. right? Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep skating right on through. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about a... A historical figure that mm -hmm. we are now having more 2020 vision on the way that they really um, change the world in their yes. way. What what is Muhammad Ali's chart say about him? Uh, that he was the greatest. <laughs> Leo, Leo rising. Ah. <laughs> Aquarius, Aquarius moon. He stood there for justice. He kneeled. He wasn't, he did not kneel for, I mean, he kneeled, but he didn't kneel to someone's yeah. restriction. Yeah. He wasn't dominated. He wasn't dominated. In a dominated. time that as he, a black man, it was very at, hard to not be. And look how polarizing it was at that time. Yeah. And coming from below the Mason-Dixon line. Mm. That's another mm. caveat, mm -hmm. right? And to, to have the whole world in his hands. I remember I was a kid, uh, 19, taking the boat over from Spain to Morocco. Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali. I mean, they love him all around the world. These little kids. That's that Aquarius energy I'm talking about. Mm. And for anyone that possesses it, we all possess it because, again, through the cycles, we go through uh, an Aquarian lunar progression at some point in our life. To be aware of that is something else, but to be born with it is another thing as he was, as you are. Uh, you see that element in Oprah. You see that element in Angela Davis, uh, the civil rights. Absolutely. Yes. Queen. Yes. Yeah. And it's not so much just that they uh, sun sign Aquarius because, again, Muhammad Ali was a Capricorn, but he took, he took 
that integrity, that that solidness, and he just blasted it yeah. in the world. The world, whether you whether they accept it, didn't matter. He was a part of the change. Can you imagine being a little boy or a little girl in such a restrictive and to see that? That's mm. that strike of lightning, mm. that Aquarian element. Mm. Mm -hmm. God, they were all, all three were just such permission givers, you know, within, within that big awakener energy. It's like you have permission to take up all the space. And, I'm, and, and they all have that running thread of Aquarius, Uranus. And where are we now? We are, we are now fair and square in that age. Okay. And there's no going back. Talk to me about that piece. Um, I would love, Daryl, to get your insights on, you know, you have been speaking really powerfully throughout the show to this moment in time that we're in. This yes. is really a moment of a call, not, not just a call to action. This is a moment that is a call to awareness, a deeper awareness within self that allows for more observation and awareness and healing in the greater world. Yes. Could you speak to what is the energetic potential available to us right now with, with what you know of the way the human condition is destined to be over the next couple of years? How can people listening best utilize this energy? What should people be doing? What should they be thinking about right now based on where all the transits currently are? Well, it's always good. And if not me, of course, there's so many uh, wonderful, wonderful um, guiders out there. But have your chart done. Yeah. Understand yeah. where that element of freedom, autonomy, awareness <clears throat> Where is that in your chart? Mm. And to the novice astrologer, are the very you know mature astrologer? What does it feel like, and how can you describe that? Mm. As opposed to speaking that language that some of us astrologers like to do, and nothing's wrong with that because that comes from a place of trying to prove it. I'm proving it with the facts. Mm. Mars is squared your Saturn, so. But what does it mean? I want to feel it, mm. to use whether it's illustration, whether it's through the chronology of a life, whether it's perhaps a difficult time, like Oprah Winfrey when she had that issue with the cattle industry. Mm. What was going on? To use those very specific times of note, noted people, noteworthy people. Um, but again, to your question, what can perhaps the layperson do? Have your chart done. Because once you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And to understand where this collective energy is in your chart. Mm -hmm. Don't look at it if you're being advised that it's a challenging time. Um, look at it as a moment of breaking free. Freedom is rarely free. It comes mm. with the price. Mm. It comes with the price. And we all have a price to pay right now. <clears throat> Either we stay back or we move forward. Either we stay Because this is the most exciting time in human history. I feel that. And that's not hyperbole. <laughs> yeah. This is the most exciting time to have a, God, I a, say. a young girl born today. Look at what's come up. Mm. Trafficking, all of this misogyny. Mm. A young girl born today won't have to deal with that as she leaves high school in 20 years mm. from now. I say that with arrogance. It's an empowerment of female energy, whatever. And because, of course, when you look at the chart, you don't see race, you don't see gender, you see the individual, you see the energy. Yeah. That's why the chart has no, there's no gender to who you are. Mm. You're you. 
and I am you, you are me, as we walk together through the cycles with awareness. With awareness. Navigate but that, with awareness. that beauty, that beauty of the liberation, <clears throat> not just look, all these stories of police brutality, just the economic term, all of it. It's, it's about awareness. It's about education. Mm -hmm. This is not political. Ultimately, what gets us ahead is that energy we're dealing with to be curious, to learn. Because with education, the higher form of the mind, you as a, purve a, a purveyor of the higher form of the mind, broadcasting what you do. And I say this to you lovingly, as a as someone I respect deeply, um, it, it's so challenging. But you're a star. Own it, <laughs> because you make you're making people feel like stars. What greater gift, mm. right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. <laughs> so how can people connect with you? Uh, how can they? How can they get <laughs> they can, a bigger taste of all this? Uh, of course, my site is guidingplanet.co, not com. Guiding Planet, guiding and I, I, I like Guiding Planet because I feel that that's what it is. It's a guide. Yeah, it's an awareness, a guide for you to direct your life, write your script, sing your skull. Uh, also my Instagram guiding planet where I tell daily the energy of the moment mm. with music. It gets back. It's full circle. Now mm. my love for the creative, I see the chart as the most beautiful composition and that's not, Oh, everybody's beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. It's a beautiful composition. Mm. And it is such a healing. It's such a it's such a healing uh, belief system. Mm. Not false optimism. Not am I going to win a lottery? And you know, it's, I know sometimes that's what we want. Yeah. But when you're given the tools. <clears throat> When you're given the tools to take control and have real freedom, freedom in relationships, understanding why, to understanding the why, mm. knowing that, yes, it's a challenge. It's not a problem. There are no problems. There's solutions. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And we all have a call. My God, do yes. we all have a call. Please, everyone listening and connecting to this episode, let this be the permission and the sign to answer the call. You don't have to have it fully fleshed out. You don't have to know right. the mechanics of the how and the when and the why. Yes. And the, you don't need the details. You have the theme. Yes. When you get your birth chart, you don't have to have the details on how these themes will be executed and come to life. But you have the greater understanding. How are you meant to be used? Yes. How are you meant to serve? How are you meant to learn, to grow? How are you meant to love? How are you meant to explore pleasure? How are you meant to be creative and curious? Yes. It feeds all of it, not all just, it. you know, some of the heavier challenges, right. that the life's work of a purpose or a healing, right. but it helps inform, you know, something I love, for instance, in my chart, my Venus is in Taurus. Yes. So being able to own the fact for me that like pleasure is through beauty. I love creating, touching, smelling, being near things that are invocative, things yes. that are inviting, that are warm, that are interesting and beautiful in their own ways, you know, and yep. knowing that part of my chart, how my creative energy best flows, how I best give and receive love. Like those are some of the juicier, exciting parts about being able to work with your chart. Absolutely. And I love that you said that. Daryl, thank you so, 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 so much for coming on the show, for sharing your wisdom, for sharing your profound gifts and for all the beauty 
that you bring into the life of your clients and of all the people that know you. I am so grateful for you. So grateful for your work. So grateful you said yes to your gifts and your calling. Thank you so much, Debbie. I mean, there are no words, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And as I say so many times, um, to be blessed and invigorated by the charts of my clients, Mm. to know this is how I got over. This is how we can get over. Mm. This is how we go through these cycles of life. Dreaming, yes, but dreaming with our our eyes wide open. Mm. Mm. We got to dream. We got to got to accept the reality, but we have to dream with our eyes wide open because it's here. This is, again, I'm sorry for the hyperbole, but this is the most exciting time to be alive. As challenging as it is, yeah. especially when we tune in to all of that stuff, the yeah. news, um, there's no question. As intense that as it is, yeah. It's yeah. really, it's a really charged, intense time, but there's... Yes. A lot to it. And that's why your voice has been elevated now more than ever. Thank you. Everyone, please go follow Daryl at Guiding Planet. Head to his website, guidingplanet.co. Thank you so much. And a little bit of soul work for this episode. You know, when we are sitting in all of this expression um, that was so beautifully shared with us from Daryl, I want you after this episode, if you have some time today and this week before we join one another again, get a journal, get in your safe space, get in your sacred space that you've created, wherever that is, take some deep breaths and as best you can from a lens of neutrality and non-judgment for your experiences, start to get down on paper the beginnings of the awareness of the themes that play in your life. Now, if you're ready for this, and also if you've already done this, connect it with your chart, get a reading, or if that is not a possibility in this moment in time for you, uh, two apps that I recommend very strongly are the Pattern app um, by the amazing Lisa Donovan and the Chani app by Chani Nichols. Uh, Both are very different. Both are very thorough and very beautiful expressions of your chart. So that's something um, that you can, you know, do from your phone, but I encourage you to find an astrology expert, someone that has been really seasoned in doing this and sit with your chart, go to guidingplanet.co. And as you do that, I want you to start identifying what are the themes at play in your unique personal life. That's the start. The more you spend time, the more you add to that paper, the more you'll begin to intuitively connect to the greater understanding of how your life is intended to be used and how you're intended to heal, to grow, to transform, and ultimately to serve. Thank you for joining us on Deeply Well. I'm Debbie Brown. Namaste.